Welcome back to the Wildcat Alley Podcast, Season 2, Episode 7. I'm Alex Margatulio. Juice Thompson here, Wildcat Alley. Shout out to our people at Beyond the Big Ten. Once again, this episode of Wildcat Alley Podcast is sponsored by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. And with us being Underdog Sports' newest partner, uh, I've got some better news. We're running a promo with them. Um, and the easiest way for you to get in on this is by downloading the app and utilizing our special code, WCA24. Uh, if you download and deposit up to $100, we'll have up to $100 matched into your account. Great way for you to start utilizing Underdog Sports. Remember, utilize our promo code, WCA24, um, for an up to $100 match on your first deposit. Now, Juice, uh, let's get into it, man. We had a, a quite the week uh, for, for the Cats. Two grueling overtime losses starting first uh, on Wednesday uh, Wednesday night in West Lafayette. Uh, a really tough loss against Purdue. And then continuing that road um, in Minneapolis with a, a tough loss in overtime to Minnesota. Obviously, it looked like we, were, we fell victim of, of tired legs, especially in that second game against Minnesota. Um, looking forward to breaking these down for you. And as well as what does the outlook for the rest of the year look like, right? We're, we're past the midway point in Big Ten play. We have a ton of opportunities ahead of us, both at home and on the road. So really looking forward to the episode today, Juice. Let's kick it off by, by talking about the week, um, kicking things off with, with Purdue. Obviously, there are a lot of great things to take from, from, from that performance, uh, Probably some gripes that you and I are going to have to uh, talk about as well with officiating and all that. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, what I saw is, is a team that was hungry for for a victory and hungry to prove uh, that the last couple games against Purdue and Welsh Ryan were not a fluke. And I think we proved that. What do you think? I agree. You know, as we talked about on previous episodes, we felt as though, you know, our Wildcats had Purdue's number. And that show, you know, we were right there in the game. Despite the fact that, you know, we didn't get a lot of calls going our way, you know, there was a big difference on the free throws. We're 46 to 8. And, you know, our, our go-to guy, Boo Boo, he shoots zero free throws. And as you and I were texting and talking about, we thought on that last play of regulation, he got fouled and they didn't call it. And, you know, I, we'll, I'll let you go into the next one, you know, that overtime one with, the, with that hook that we talked about. But, you know, you got you to gotta love how resilient we are. You know, we got down kind of big on the road and that's something we talked about if we get down big on the road especially in Mackey with it being so hard to play there it could get ugly but you know we stayed together five players on our team in double digits and then you just got to give credit to Boo I mean some of the shots that he were making were unbelievable I mean some fadeaway fall back threes and him getting to that floater then you know Ty Berry he had a big game and our guy Brooks you know going back to Indiana you know, I think what his dad played there, and I know his episode of the Big Ten Journey is coming out soon, and he played a good game against Purdue. So there's a lot of good things to take away from it. But, I mean, obviously we can't control the referees, but if we had a few calls going our way, I think the outcome could have been different. But got to tip our hats to him. But what was your outlook on that game? Yeah, without getting too far into the weeds on officiating and foul discrepancy and free throw discrepancy, the positives that I take from the game is that we have shot makers that can carry us in March. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're a very difficult team to prepare for to, so much to the point that Purdue went zone. When is the last time you've ever seen yeah. a Matt Painter or a Purdue coach team go zone? So I can honestly say never. I haven't yeah. seen that's why I was like, what is going on? They got out of kind of quick, but yeah, I was like, what is this? They got out of it quick, but it just, I think it just shows like, the amount of preparation it takes to work in some of the stuff that we do, we're constantly throwing loops in um, from our, our typical play calls, finding our scores, um, opportunities. And, you know, we, we did it again. I think Coach Collins and, and crew had a tremendous game plan, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and I think that's just going to continue. We're just tough to prepare for. And if you get us on a, a short, short window, so say, you know, that second game in, in, in March and in the tournament, we're going to be a very difficult out. 
Um, I think what we need to see is that defensive unity come together a little bit more. I still think we're a fraction late on our traps. I think there is times where we're trapping from the wrong area as well, the wrong area of the floor, leaving some easy kickouts or cross-court pa- cross passes without any resistance. So offensively, I think we're going to be okay. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit lo- lo- later on in the episode about the Minnesota game. I think that was just a, a product of, of tired legs. Um, but anytime you score, you know, 90 plus on the road, you should be happy and, and think you're going to come up with a, with a win, but that free throw discrepancy was, uh, pretty eye opening to me. Uh, yeah. I saw somebody on, on Twitter. It's Ant Wright who, who does a really good job. Um, did like a foul audit and free throw audit. You know, I'm not saying we weren't following Purdue. I think we were like for the most part, we were, we were following them and, and our game plan was to use all 15 fouls, especially from, uh, our five, our five position yeah. where I have the biggest beef and, and, and gripe is, is some of these calls that are just blatantly missed, right? Like Lance Jones hooks Martinelli in the corner, blatantly hooks right in front of the official. And it's a missed call. And it, it, it could change the trajectory of the game at that time. We're down three. We are surging. We have him trapped in the corner and he uses an offensive advantage to gain position on the court, which is an offensive foul. He was able to use that off arm. He stumbles forward. He clearly loops his entire arm around him. It's not like he just chicken winged and didn't get him. He fully wrapped around in order to get that edge. So that one really hurt because that gave us an opportunity with a timeout and, you know, a lot of seconds to work with down three where our, our staff has done a really good job. ATOs, baseline out of bounds, yes. all those things that we could draw something up to get a good look. And we did it all day. We got that look for Ty to hit a three and he, he got fouled and, and made all three free throws. Like there's just a lot of pivotal moments that were missed in that game. And it, it it's hard not to look back and be, and, and play that coulda, shoulda, woulda game. Um, but nonetheless, really proud of the effort and the way that we withstood adversity throughout the entire game. You know, they went on their runs we answered right away. We came back after halftime. I think we were down, you know, eight or nine after half. Immediately put our pedal on pedal on the gas or our, our foot on the gas and executed right away. Got it down, and then hey, we're like, this is a, this is a ball game. We're in for a dog fight. This isn't going to be one where you just cakewalk in the second half. So really, really happy with the effort, the energy, and then honestly, I'm okay with with. Coach getting thrown out too. I think that was 5K well spent. Yeah. That's what I keep saying. I think that was 5K well spent. I know we tried to finagle it in the post game presser saying that we have tremendous officiating. And I really, you know, I, by and large, I think we do have good officiating. Yeah. There was, there were just some, some calls that were blatantly missed that um, need to be reported. And it, and it needs to be something that uh, the commissioner and the conference is looking into because there are a lot of games and it's not just Northwestern games that are getting affected by some of these big time calls yeah. you know is this something that moving forward in the ncaa needs to be addressed are there going to be coaches challenges issued we do have a huge problem with late game scenarios where the games stretch on for 30 minutes past they past the way they should because a ball goes out of bounds that we don't know who it's off of cool i'm okay with that being reviewed but that hook should be able to be reviewed and 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 review and reviewed and reversed yeah. No, I agree with you a thousand percent. So, I mean, that would be something that they can bring up and, you know, they're always changing rules, but definitely I think they should try to submit some of that stuff and see, but that coach Collins going out there and going after him, I really think that's a good thing. And that just gives, you know, the players more confidence to know that, you know, our head coach has our back. And then you got to give coach Collins some credit too, as he's walking off after his, you know, him going off on the referees, he stops to shake uh, Coach Painter's hand, Zach Eady, and then yeah. he's hyping the crowd up. I love that as he went out. So, you know, I was all for that. And like you said, I think that's a, a good $5,000 spent. You know, I don't think that's hurting the university or his pockets, anything, not like we're pocket watching. But I think that was a good thing that can help them moving forward. But before we move past it, I know we talked about this Purdue game and you know, we're talking about Lance Jones. Got to give him some credit, though. That was the one player I told you, you know, I was a little worried about. He didn't shoot yeah. the ball well when he came to Edmonton to play at Welsh Ryan. He's from Edmonton, and he came out. He played well. 
what I think he had 25 points, made some big free throws down the stretch, and maybe because of the way he was playing that day and the way the crowd loves him, that maybe that could be a part of the reason why he got away with that hook. He made that big three, man. We were up five yeah. with like three and a half minutes to go. We went on a big run, took it to, to, to up five, and he hit a dagger of a three. It was a great pass by I, – I can't remember if it was Braden Smith – one of his 16 dimes or, or Edie who crit, who like skipped it across court and he had a really good three on a hard closeout um, that I think really changed the momentum there because we, we struggled to score in that last two and a half. They ended up taking the lead back. And then obviously we, we know what happened from there, but um, yeah, it was just like, it was just one of those games where I feel like we didn't have it. Then we had it in our fingertips and then, you know, we, we lost it. So this is something that I want to uh, talk to you about. Where do you think our end of game struggles have, have come, especially as of late when I feel like we've done a good job of coming back, but if we have the lead and we hold the lead late, we haven't been efficient down the stretch. And that became really noticeable against Minnesota as well. Again, held the lead late in this late in the second half. We let them get back into the game. Obviously I was a game of runs, uh, yeah. I, I think they showed it when, when on TV, like the, the number of runs that, that went on. It was like 7-0, then it was 12-0 for the other side, then it was 7-0 for the other side. That, you know what I mean? Like flip-flopping runs the entire game. And it continued in the second half. But at some point, we need to change that narrative and change that trajectory. And I think we went away from Boo getting looks midway through the second half. Boo came out firing. Uh, he did a great job of establishing – the pace and tempo in the second half. And we, again, extended that lead. But then come the midway point to let's call it the four-minute mark, he didn't get that many shots up or, or even many looks. You know, it might have been something that Minnesota was doing differently. But I think in the long run, we got to find a way to get Boo more consistent looks, especially down the stretch. Um, and I think it forced us into taking some tough shots. We turned the ball over a lot. Overall, I just wasn't impressed with the, the effort against Minnesota. I know, um, you know, it's a road game. It's a tough environment. We're coming off of a, a tough game as well. But I think that game should have been won in, in regulation by us. And I don't know if we took our, our foot off the gas or, or what, but number one, the problems that I saw against Minnesota, we didn't contain the ball. And that's been the number one problem mm -hmm. uh, for our defense all year. When we haven't been able to control the ball, teams have been able to pick us apart. You know, you look at that last play, Elijah He's drives baseline and finds Cam Christie, who's the only guy you couldn't leave, right? Yeah. We're getting caught in these early rotations way too often, and it's because we haven't been able to contain the ball. And, you know, I think that puts our defense at an anxious place, right? Got yeah. a lot of people ball watching. People are losing sight of their man because they're so focused on their help side principles that – we're already caught in caught mid rotation. Teams are good enough to find those open guys. Um, so that was the that was a big thing for me. It was turnovers and not being able to uh, contain the ball down the stretch. Now I know we talked a lot about Purdue. If you have any other things that, to to comment on that, go right ahead. But I kind of just jumped into the Minnesota game. What you, what what are some of your thoughts there? Yeah. So um, basically, like for the lat like the end of game stuff, like we were talking about. You know, I'll go into both. Like you said, I agree with you. I think we got to get the ball in Boo's hands and find more ways to get him some shots, especially down the stretch in the games, because over the last few years, he's shown he's the guy. He's going to make those yeah, he's a closer. big plays. And it's like, you know, sometimes now it's like he's kind of standing in that corner a little bit on some of those plays. And I know the other teams are doing a great job of, you know, kind of denying him full court and making someone else bring the ball up or make a play. But I would love to see him get the ball more, especially in the games and close it out. And then defensively, you know, you you made a great point at the beginning of this episode is we got to really find our identity on the defensive end. You know, we're doing a great job moving the ball, you know, against Purdue, five guys and double figures. You know, we go on these runs, but then it's like we have a little slip up. And right, you know, in that possession, if we can, after we get a couple baskets, if we can get those two, three key stops in a row, we can really get some separation in games, but it's just like that Purdue game, you know, uh, Lance Jones hits that big three win and that changed momentum. Then Minnesota Cam Christie hits that three that changes the momentum. 
So I think, you know, got to lock in more, get some key stop, get the ball in Boo's hands in the games. I think we'll be fine. And then Minnesota, you know, just from the beginning, I thought guys were tired. You know, 17 turnovers for us. That's unlike us. I think what we're top top 10 in the, in the nation with the turnovers per game at like nine. So we were turning the ball over. That's uncharacteristic of us. I think we did a decent job rebounding the ball, but, you know, just shots were short towards the end of the game. Guys weren't, you know, fully rotating. And like you said, you know, just people are getting into the paint and that's been killing us all season. And that Elijah guy, he did a great job. What he had 10 assists. And, you know, the one thing I understand about him coming out of that timeout when they were up, when he fouled Boo, you know, full court, when they double teamed Boo and gave him some free throws, I didn't understand that. But, you know, we have to do a better job containing the ball, especially on ball screens in the games. Once guys get in the paint, they have us scrambling. And like you said, we're sitting there ball watching. And it's been tough. But you got to give credit to Minnesota. They played well. They had a pretty good crowd. But I do think that was a game that we could have won. But, you know, guys were tired. You know, you're two travel days in a week, back-to-back overtime games. Shots were short. We missed a good amount of free throws down the stretch that usually we're making. You know, it's nothing to worry about. I mean, we'll get some rest, make our free throws, get back in the gym. But, you know, to see Boo miss three free throws, then Ryan miss those two, that's something that those two won't do. I don't think they'll do again this season. But it's just one of those games we kind of got to – you know, learn from it, try to get our rest and recover, but take care of the ball, continue to shoot the ball well from the three and then get our defense down. I think we'll be fine moving forward. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it's one of those games where you, you, you take a good long look at the film. You learn a lot from it. You understand where a majority of your shots were coming from and you can use that as a, as a way to, to propel you for the, for the next few weeks here. And Looking forward, we like we said, we're we're past that midway point in the conference. You know, we're we're currently sitting at number four um, in the conference, which yeah. is great, which is right where you and I expected us to be, right? In that top five. But yeah. right now, we need to solidify our spot at that top four because come Big Ten tournament time, having that double buy would be a, mm. a huge benefit to the legs, a huge benefit to the resume. Um, and all of that. I know you and I are past talking about, you know, are we going to make the tournament? I, I'm a firm believer that this team has the body of work, has the capability, has the structure and resume to to be in the tournament. Now it's more so of like, okay, where are we going to end up on that seed line? Um, and number one, we just got to take care of business starting at home, right? We have a, a, our second to last homestand of the season. We have Nebraska tonight at the Welsh and Nebraska, and then a tough Penn State team who's firing on all cylinders right now coming into our barn on Sunday um, thinking that they can beat us because we came, they came back. We came back in the second half against them mm-hmm. and basically stole a game from them in Happy Valley. So um, I'm interested to, to, to know what – it's gut check time, right? These are two must-win games in my opinion. Um, that would get us to eight and five in the conference and really solidify us as a top four team. And who knows with the way the conference is going right now, anybody can lose on any given night. Yep. Right. So if we can maintain that, you know, that five, five losses in that right-hand column, I think we'd be in really good shape. Um, we're only going to affect our net net in the positive here. If we can get a win against a really tough Nebraska team, uh, a thriving Penn state team. And then we have to go on the road, right? Then we have to take care of business on the road at Rutgers at Indiana home against Michigan at Maryland home against Iowa at Michigan state, and then home against Minnesota. So I know on paper, it says we have one of the easier um, conference schedules remaining, but in in, in no way, shape or form, are we going to take any of these opponents lightly? No, definitely not. And, you know, like starting tonight, we're finally, we're back home after being on the road, two games last week, we have to come out and protect home court. You know, you got to expect the fans to be out in full force. And, you know, Nebraska, they've struggled on the road. But they've lost, what, six of their seven uh, Big Ten games on the road. So they're, they haven't been playing well on the road. But as of late, you know, that game at Illinois, they took them down to the wire. They almost got that win. And, you know, they were able to beat us the first game down there at Nebraska. And now, you know, they're back at full strength. 
They have an, an additional body, an additional big. So this should be a taller lineup out there. But, you know, we have our crowd behind us. We got a couple of days to rest. I think we're going to be fine. We come out, continue to shoot the three like we've been shooting the last few games because you got to tip your hat to our guys. They've been making, what, shooting a high clip from the three-point yeah. line, especially on the yeah. road, which isn't easy. So you got to expect us to continue to shoot the ball well and then lock in on our defensive principles. I think we should be fine. And then, you know, going forward, we got to take it one game at a time. Penn State, as you mentioned, that's not going to be easy. No. And then moving forward, we're going to go back on the road. And just because on paper it seems easy, but as you know, as we've been seeing this season, it's not easy winning in the Big Ten. So we have to do something to separate ourselves because right now everybody's kind of bunched up together, six and five, six and six. So it's kind of one of those, like, you win two, three in a row, you can jump up from being in 10th place, you know, being alone in fourth yeah. place. But if you lose two in a row, you can drop down and it can really affect things. So I like how you mentioned with the Big Ten tournament, getting that double bye and how much that can really help to help us. I think, you know, the team understands, you know, it's gut check time. And I saw one of the interviews, Coach Collins, and the guys pretty much know this is this is pretty much like a must-win game tonight. And I feel the same way. What are your thoughts? You think this is a much win, must-win game tonight and then Sunday, not trying to look too far ahead, but what do you think? I do. I, I think this is a, an opportunity against a good team. Like, like we need to improve our, our, our net ranking, our Ken Palm ranking. Uh, so if we can get a double digit win tonight against Nebraska, I think that would, that would really send a, a, a really strong statement. And if we can rattle off two, three, four wins in a row here, like you mentioned, it's time, it's separation time in those standings. You know, we know how the big 10 traditionally operates that, you know, we're always going to have that clump of middle of the road teams that are jockeying for position week in and week out. Let's not have to worry about that. Let's take care of business at home tonight at home against Penn state on Sunday. That would give us a, a great bit of breathing room in the standings, get us bolster us up to eight and five. And then um, just take care of business night in and night out. I think today is a, is a, is a must win game. I think it is a game where we can definitely prove to the country that, you know, we are legit and we are for real by beating a really solid Nebraska team who had a great week coming off of a, a win uh, at home against number six, Wisconsin at the time, and then taking Illinois down to the, down to the wire um, in Champaign as well. So it's a dangerous team. They're a good shooting team. They've improved drastically defensively. They play through their center a lot, which worries me. Um, bring in Matt and, and Luke uh, and, and Blake away from the basket. Um, and, you know, they have some guys that can get hot. C.J. Wilcher's had a terrific year, probably the sixth man of the year in the conference. Uh, Tommy Naga, as you and I were, were, were talking before the call, has no conscience and will shoot it from everywhere. And, and they go in. Yeah. Um, so I think there's some difficult matchups on there. But I, I'd like to see us be the aggressor today. I want to see them have to guard us, guard our action um, for a certain amount of time and and really wear them out on that side of the court. So I'm hoping the crowd can be strong and, and at the, at the boys back today and, and obviously propel us to, to victory. But um, I think it's a super crucial game, but, but one that we can definitely win. And if we can win by, by double digits, it'll send a real big statement. Real big. And then one other thing to mention, you know, that game at Nebraska when we lost, Boo shot two for 15. I don't remember yeah. him doing that, you know, ever or many, many years ago. So I'm expecting him, you know, just knowing, you know, as a player, you know how it is. You know, you have certain certain games staying in the back of your mind. You know, you know, in bit, especially in conference, you're going to play yeah. teams twice. You know, OK, this game I didn't shoot well. This what worked. This what didn't work. So I'm sure Boo kind of had that circle or just, you know, Somewhere in his mind, he's going to come out, I think, aggressive. And like you said, we have to be the aggressors and we have to make them guard. So I'm expecting a pretty big night from Boo. And then, you know, moving forward, then we got Penn State. After we take care of business tonight, I'm calling it. I think we're going to get this win. Then Penn State, you know, we were able to pull out a big win there. Like you said, we came back. But that was another game where we had some uncharacteristic turnovers. I think we had 17, 18 turnovers then. The guy, Ace Baldwin Jr., unbelievable, eight steals. So what do you, you know, think some keys with that game is going to be moving forward? Because that's eight steals. It's crazy. It's unreal. But, you know, we got to take care of the ball. What do you think for that game coming up? I, I, 
I th- you you kind of hit the nail on the head already, but my thing with Penn State, right? They play differently than anybody in the league. They they do. They run. They have that run and jump. They play super helter skelter. They have athletes all over the place, and they they turn you up. They turn you up. They foul. They reach. They you know what I mean. But they get away with it because that's how they play. They play. Yep. And they play hard and they play fast and they play chaotic. And they and if you can if you can get by that, then you have the opportunity to score in, in the half court. But um they have those super pestery guards, you know, like you said, Ace Baldwin leading the uh leading the conference in steals, probably super high up there in, in the country in, in in terms of steals. Um but number one, I, I'd like to see them beat us from the outside. I don't want to see them get any easy buckets. And I think that's what happened in the first game. First game, first half, they had a lot of easy shots, a lot of easy buckets, layups, turnovers that turned to touchdowns, right? Um, a lot of like non-dead ball turnovers, turnovers that are leading to easy buckets. That's when Penn State's at their best. If we can contain that, get by their initial surge and make them score in the half court, I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah. Same. And then uh, I think that game when we played Penn State, I think we helped them to maybe like 17, 18 percent for three. So it's going to be, you know, another game where we can't let them get hot, limit those, you know, long passes, limit them in a fast break and transition. I think we should be good. And then we get these two wins. And like you said, you know, we have a, a tough schedule on paper. It's easy. But I think, you know, we're in a really good position. We're good to make the tournament. But are there anything, any keys, any any predictions of where you see we'll be in the Feed tournament the stars, man. seven seed eight Feed seed the stars what That's... would you like to see in the tournament any thoughts i like us i like us getting a seven ten matchup i think if we take care of business um we can go all the way to about a six i think what's realistic is that seven eight line for us right now um we got a couple more quad one opportunities on the schedule um but need to take care of business uh, on, on, you know, some of these quad two, quad two opponents as well. So, um, just looking forward, you know, not looking forward too much, but I think we have the potential to be on that, that seven line, um, come selection Sunday. Definitely. I and I'm hoping that we have a, a little bit more of a regional, regional game. We know the, the Wildcat fans are going to travel last year. We were out in numbers in, uh, in Sacramento, Hopefully this year we can get like a, a little closer. Dayton or an Indianapolis or somewhere closer where we can all, all get there and really show um, how deep Northwestern basketball basketball runs. Because as you know, Juice, like we we graduate the smallest amount of people in in, in the conference, yeah. and we're in a city that has a lot of Big Ten alums. But once we get to like California and places that we can travel. You know, Northwestern is widespread. We will, we will, we will gather and we will, uh, and we will show our support for the, for the team. Um, and I think it's just going to be a, a really fun time come March. And uh, obviously, already looking forward to it. So just got to take care of business. We have and, to. Uh, and get start planning some plane tickets. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. Great episode. So I'll see you tonight at the game. Let's get this W. Then yeah, we'll catch you guys. Wildcat Alley season two will be back soon with episode eight. We should have some really good updates after a couple of big wins for our for our Wildcats. Shout out to our guys at Beyond the Big Ten. New amendment. Let you take us out, Shakes. Yeah, another great episode, Juice. Looking forward to seeing you at the game. Uh, Cats with a couple big home tests this week. Mm-hmm. Let's come out with those dubs. And I uh, got some special guests coming uh, on the pod in the next few weeks and uh, looking forward to, to getting them on, talking all things Northwestern basketball. As always, Juice, it's a pleasure. Likewise, my brother. Talk soon. Good, good talking. See you tonight.